Hey everybody, this one's called Medical Dictatorship. That's what we're under right now. First of all, I'm not a liar. Uh, you should never take my word for anything. I'm not a lawyer. No, I'm not a liar. You should always do your own research. I provided references to aid your, your research. I don't know everything, and I'm open to any ideas. There's um, four kinds of people you'll meet in your life. There's the people who try to wake up the slaves. There's the slave masters. There's the people who have no idea they're slaves, and there's the people who like being slaves. Which one are you? Do you really know for sure? Are you who you think you are? If you can see through the illusion, then you are the solution. If the people do not know their basic rights and freedoms, how can they know when or if their rights and freedoms are being infringed? Never forget the men who started this country were marijuana growing, whiskey drinking, tax evading rebels who left their beds at night to shoot at the cops. All tyranny needs to gain a foothold is for people of good conscience to remain silent. I don't trust the government. I don't trust the medical, pharmaceutical, industrial complex. I don't trust the military industrial complex. I don't trust the mainstream media. And I don't trust the bankster criminal cabal that owns the government, owns the medical, pharmaceutical, industrial complex, owns the military industrial complex, and owns the mainstream media. If you call me a conspiracy theorist, then I don't trust you. Government is not reason, it is not eloquence, it is force. Like fire, it's a dangerous servant and a fearful master. Article 1 of the Libra Code says, A place, district, or count, country occupied by an enemy stands in consequence of the occupation under the martial law invading of the invading or occupying army whether any proclamation declaring martial law or any public warning to the inhabitants has been issued or not. Martial law is the immediate and direct effect and consequence of occupation or conquest. The presence of the hostile army proclaims its martial law. Article 2, General Orders 100 by the way, or the Libra Code, says martial law does not cease during a hostile occupation except by special proclamation ordered by the commander-in-chief or by special mention in the Treaty of Peace. And neither one of those has happened. I've never seen either one of those. Um, Article 10 of the General Orders 100, or the Libra Code, martial law affects chiefly the police and the collection of public revenue and taxes, whether imposed by the expelled government or by the invader, and refers mainly to the support and efficiency of the army, its safety, and the safety of its operations. Well, look at this. So whether imposed by the expelled government or the invader, okay? So, and so how does the expelled government wind up imposing it? And, and so evidence of martial law is everywhere. We're under a military dictatorship and have been for decades. There's three kinds of martial law. This is how it gets imposed. There's a full martial law. There's a declaration of martial law issued. Troops put on the streets, used only during wartime, used in foreign country when actually invaded by foreign power to put down an armed rebellion. And actually, that wouldn't necessarily require a declaration under Article 1 of the Libra Code, would it? Martial law proper is the law of the armed forces. When a captain tells a private what to do, it's enforced by court martials. And martial law rule, the law of necessity and emergency, okay? And that's what we're under, is an emergency. Why do you think that every president has to have these, this war on terror, or this war on this, or the war on crime, or the war on something? That's the law of necessity and emergency. It's, there's an emergency. Allows the domestic use of martial law powers. It's used during times of peace and continue, can continue for centuries during a military occupation. And that's taken from Ex parte Milligan, uh, uh, U.S. Supreme Court, uh, and that's cited in Diet versus in the actually in the non ratification of the 14th Amendment by Judge H. Ella to the Utah Supreme Court <clears throat> in the case Diet versus Turner. And there's the emergency. There's the New World slave flag right there. The New World slave flag. It's a medical dictatorship. Governors like Adamant are issuing their edicts under their military dictatorship. They're called executive orders to ensure that their property, you, is safe. If you think you're their property. The question is, are you their property? Or do you wish to be their property? 
So I would suggest maybe we ought to recall Abbott's ass. Executive orders are not law. Executive orders are color of law. Executive orders are the equivalent to regulations. Regulations are for government property. And that's actually found, well, this is Title 18, United States Code, Section 242, violating rights under color of law. That's a felony for them to do that. Whoever under color of any law, statute, ordinance, regulation, or custom willfully subjects any inhabitant of any state, territory, commonwealth, possession, or district to the deprivation of any rights, privileges, or immunity secured or protected by the constitutional laws of the United States shall be fined under this title or imprisoned um, not more than one year or both. It's a felony. 241. Conspiracy. If two or more persons conspire to injure, oppress, threaten, or intimidate, if you're forcing me to wear that mask, that's certainly intimidation, that's threatening, that's oppressing, and that's injuring. Any person in any state, territory, commonwealth possession, so when the governor issues his edict and this hired thug here in this local restaurant uh, forces me to, uh, to wear it, or attempts to, even attempts to force me to wear it, uh, that's intimidation. In any state, territory, commonwealth, possession, or district, in the free exercise and enjoyment of any right or privilege secured to him by the constitutional laws of the United States, look at Article 9 in Amendment. Article 9 in Amendment says that, um, um, I'd have to look that one up, but it says that basically that uh, the enumeration of certain rights in the Constitution doesn't uh, suggest, doesn't mean that there's other ones, okay? And so it, it implies that there's a whole bunch more, and, and that is, and that's common law rights. And common law rights are unlimited, okay? So any right or privilege secured to him by the constitutional laws of the United States or because of his having so exercised the same, they shall be in fined or entitled uh, 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 under this title or in prison not more than 10 years or both. Papers, please. Gee, that looks like intimidation. That looks like threatening, coercion, and injury. Okay, they forced him to stop. My new book is now available. Trump, a true American patriot or not. Um, Mike Blackwell uh, financed the book, and so I put him on it, but I wrote the book, all of it. Um, this is the back of the book. This part I didn't write, actually. This was written by the publisher. What truly matters is not which party controls our government, but whether our government is controlled by the people. At the center of this movement is a crucial conviction that a nation exists to serve its citizens. And uh, for too long, a small group of our nation's capital has reaped the rewards of government at the cost of its citizens. Washington flourished, but the insiders refused to share in its wealth. Politicians prospered, but allowed our jobs to leave and our factories to close. And that's taken from uh, Trump's uh, inaugural address. Not anymore. And Trump, a true American patriot or not, Glenn Fern uh, and Mike Wallet, Mike Blackwell um, reveal the depths of corruption, deceit, and manipulation infesting our political system for hundreds of years, regardless of political affiliation. Read the hard evidence that exposes how our elected officials sold Americans into slavery. Understand the Founding Fathers' true intent when they formed our Republican form of government. Discover the influence of satanic Roman cult in our politicians and our political system. Does Donald Trump want to transfer power back to we the people? In Trump, you will see the great battle that is upon us. And that is true. You can order the book from Amazon or from my website. Um, it's $30 plus uh, shipping. Um, I prefer you order from my website. And a link to my website is right there. SovereigntyInternational.fyi and it'll be right on the front page of the website. It'll take you to PayPal. If you don't want to pay with PayPal, then uh, contact me privately at the email address that's in this video, engineerwin at yahoo.com. Uh, anyways, Amazon does not provide autographed books. If you want the book autographed, order the book from my website, but don't forget to let me know what you want the autograph to say. So Congress is responsible for the tyranny. Congress created, uh, actually they converted citizenship into the opposite of what the Founding Fathers intended. Uh, Congress gave governments permission to screen for low intelligence for their code enforcers. Congress granted plausible deniability to their order followers so they can rape, pillage, and murder as much as they like and then claim good faith immunity. Congress mandated fluoride in the drinking water to dumb down the people for their concentration camps. Congress refuses to approve the International Criminal Court because they intend to engage in war crimes. Not that I'm a big lover of the International Criminal Court or the UN, uh, but obviously 
um, that would be one way of getting a remedy um, if they uh, acceded to it. Congress created the Roman cult Sestake Trust as a mechanism to enslave everybody, collateralize their so-called debt, and sell everybody into slavery. Congress mandated everybody register their births to compel everybody into their slavery system. Congress created administrative law based on the fraudulent fictitious contracts as a mechanism of slavery. You volunteered. That's called the Administrative Procedures Act from 1947. Congress created all sorts of prisons to facilitate their military dictatorship and their slavery agenda. Congress gave the president the power to make war without congressional approval as a mechanism of slavery all over the planet. Now, some of these, some of the presidents, like for example, Obama, was a textbook tyrant, and and it was endless wars under Obama. Trump is trying to put an end to it all. Congress mandated child protective services to engage in the theft of our children, to facilitate their pedophilia industry and their human trafficking industry. Congress mandated child support in their so-called court to impoverish people and support their prison industry. That's right, people get sold into slavery because they can't afford to make the child support payments. Congress has converted all the states into territories with their international law rule, their administrative law, and their so-called contracts. Congress mandated filing fees for their bar members to convert a court case into a commercial tra transaction so the bought and paid for a whore selling as just us can sit there and play stupid and then use their millions of code rules and regulations against you. Congress imposed a military dictatorship to supersede and replace common law. Congress mandating their so-called real ID for their slaves to fabricate evidence of their slaves so their bar members' presumptions. Congress has given pharmaceutical companies immunity for their poisonous vaccines. Congress has authorized naked short selling on Wall Street. And really, you know, they say Trump is running as a Republican and there was this uh, latest Republican National Convention. You know, Republicans are just as bad as the Democrats. And uh, the Democrats want to spend money like mad and the Republicans make these authoritarian uh, laws that put people into prison. Rebellion to tyrants is obedience to God. Now, this is supposed to be uh, uh, Jefferson's seal, although I've seen Jefferson's seal, and it had a TJ on it. So, um, But it's also uh, said that this is the obverse side, the back side of the seal that Jefferson proposed for the United States. Um, and that's possible. I don't know. This seal is definitely associated with Jefferson. This shows the pillar of fire, the children of Israel, and the armies of Egypt being drowned in the Red Sea. A society whose citizens refuse to see and investigate the facts or refuse to believe that their government and their media will routinely lie to them and fabricate a reality contrary to verifiable facts is a society that chooses and deserves the police state dictatorship it is going to get. And, um, you know, to some extent that's true, but to some extent that's all about fraud and deception. And this guy is probably a Satanist. Martial law is the public law of necessity. Necessity calls it force. Necessity justifies its exercise, and necessity measures the extent and degree to which it may be employed. That necessity is no formal, artificial, legalistic concept, but an actual and factual one. It is the necessity of taking action to safeguard the state against insurrection, riot, disorder, or public calamity. What constitutes necessity is a question of fact in each case. And that's... Um, Frederick B. Weiner, A Practical Manual of Martial Law, 1940, and is cited in Black's Law Dictionary, 8th edition, page 3093. Necessity is the plea of every infringement of human freedom. It is the argument of tyrants. It is the creed of slaves. Well said William Pitt the Younger in a speech to the House of Commons, November 18, 1783. You think this is anything new? It's, that was during the War of Independence period. The action of Congress in the passage of the first Legal Tender Act was placed distinctly upon the ground of the existing imperative need of the government, and the Legal Tender was, Clause was urged as a, adopted as a war major. Martial law, necessity, emergency. Juilliard versus Greenman, U.S. Supreme Court, 1884. Congress, claiming its martial law power to declare war, suppress insurrections, and repel invasions, imposed martial law in the United States and never discontinued it. The result was an extension of military municipal jurisdiction of Congress. 
But where's the evidence of this? Look at the 13th Amendment, the Civil Rights Act, the Legal Tender Laws, the 14th Amendment, etc., etc., etc. And this is taken from the non-ratification of the 14th Amendment by Judge A.H. Allen to the Utah Supreme Court related to the case Diet v. Turner in 1968. The 14th Amendment is an extension of national military powers presently used in a municipal character and enforced by municipal laws stretched far beyond their original limitations and enforced by Article I tribunals. And that's taken from the non-ratification of the 14th Amendment by Judge H. Ella to the Utah Supreme Court in the case Diet v. Turner, 1968. And this has been going on from the beginning of time. This is taken from the cause and necessities for taking up arms, 1775. Statutes have been passed extending the courts of admiralty and vice admiralty far beyond their ancient limits for depriving us of the accustomed and inestimable privilege of trial by jury in cases affecting both life and property to supersede the course of common law and instead thereof to publish and order the use and the exercise of law martial. The war of independence was because of martial law being imposed on the colonists and for altering fundamentally the form of government established by charter. We saw the miseries to which such despotism would reduce us dictatorship folks martial law folks rebellion against tyrants is obedience to god international law rule adopted for areas under federal legislative jurisdiction federalizes state civil law including common law the rule serves to federalize not only statutory but the common law of a state um, state and federal venue discussed the civil laws effective in an area of exclusive federal jurisdiction or federal laws notwithstanding their derivation from state laws and a cause arising under such laws may be brought in or removed to federal district court under and tells you which sections of the code which have changed from time to time and this is taken from jurisdiction over federal areas within the states report for the interdepartmental committee of the study of jurisdiction over federal areas within the states Part 2, a text of the law of legislative jurisdiction submitted to the Attorney General and transmitted to the President June 1957. The United States shall guarantee to every state in this union a Republican form of government. They have breached the trust. Article 4, Section 4 of the Constitution. Do you have a dictatorship or do you have a republic? The refusal of King George III to allow the colonies to operate an honest money system which freed the ordinary man from the clutches of the money manipulators was probably the prime cause of the revolution. Benjamin Franklin, and that's true. Money is always the source of it. Only 3% of the colonies actually, colonists actually fought and won the American Revolutionary War. They were people like you and me that said no. It, if they came to these understandings and acted rightly upon them, so can we. Freedom is the highest spiritual truth. Fighting to defend it mentally and physically is our natural inherent human birthright. Resistance to the evil of human slavery is not futile. It is the path of spiritual alignment with the very law of creation itself. Freedom is not a gift bestowed upon us by other men, but a right that belongs to us from the laws of God and nature. Well said Benjamin Franklin. When tyranny becomes law, rebellion becomes duty. And that's Jefferson said that. But in considering the question before us, it must be borne in mind that there is no law of nations standing between the people of the United States and their government and interfering with their relation with, to each other. The powers of the government and the rights of the citizens under it are positive practical regulations plainly written down. The people of the United States have delegated to it certain enumerated powers and forbidden it to exercise others. So martial law is under the law of nations or international law, and a republic is not international law or the law of nations. A republic is completely different and so if you're being imposed martial law on then you're not under a republic you need to understand that and and it's because they think they have you in a contract you've given up your rights one of the biggest ways that you can do that the purpose of a republican form of government is to shield we the people from international law the, and the way you get into uh, international law is because of the money because when you use commercial paper it doesn't pay the debt. It discharges it with limited liability. And when you use it, it takes you into international law. Or they can presume. They even presume you use it. A state does not owe its origin to the government of the United States or its highest of any, or any of its branches. It was in existence before it. It derives its authority from the same pure and sacred source as itself, the voluntary and deliberate choice of the people. 
a state is altogether exempt from the jurisdiction of the courts of the United States or from any other exterior authority unless in special circumstances where the general government has power derived from the Constitution itself. The question to be determined is whether this state, so respectable and whose claims soar so high, is amenable to the jurisdiction of the Supreme Court of the United States. This question, important in itself, will depend on others, more important still, and may perhaps be ultimately resolved into one, no less radical than this. Do the people of the United States form a nation? By that law, the several states and governments spread over our globe are considered as forming a society, not a nation. And that CAPS was in the original, and that's Chisholm versus Georgia, 1794. So in, when the War of Independence was fought, there were no nations on the planet. Think about it. Two national governments exist, one to be maintained under the Constitution with all its restrictions, the other to be maintained by Congress outside and independently of that instrument. And that's uh, Downs versus Bidwell, U.S. Supreme Court. The style of this Confederacy shall be the United States of America. That's found in the Articles of Confederation, Article 1. And yet, if you go get a passport, it only says United States of America, two separate entities. A passport is a written document given to a person or persons by a commander of belligerent forces authorizing him or them to travel unmolested within the district occupied by his troops. Passports are issued by the State Department or a similar office in other countries to diplomatic agents or others entering or traveling in foreign countries which are the same general character as those issued during war. The latter should, when practicable, have the photograph of the bearer attached and that's taken from the Rules of Land Warfare, 1914 edition, Passports, Safe Conduct, Safeguards, and Cartels, Chapter 7, Section 4, Article 276, page 100. So a passport's a military document. So then that, that, that thing right there, that passport, that United States of America, is the unconstitutional corporation that was set up in 1871. And there's a Federal Reserve note says the United States of America. At common law, only gold and silver were legal tender. If you want common law, it requires honest measures. That is a um, McLaren versus Nesbitt. I'm not sure where that case could be found, but it's citing inst two institutes, 577, which is Coke in the 1500s. There is a distinction between a debt discharged and one paid. When discharged, the debt still exists, though divested of its character as a legal obligation during the operation of the discharge. You know, these bar members lay awake at night dreaming this stuff up. Discharge falls under the law of nations, which is international law. So when you use Federal Reserve notes, or they can presume that you're using, or that you want to use them, that you volunteered to use them, then you just volunteered, they can presume it, and, and these bar members are scum. And, and they go and assault you with their international law. Governments descend to the level of a mere private corporation and take on the characteristics of a mere private citizen where private corporate commercial paper, securities, is concerned for purposes of suits such corporations and individuals are regarded as entities entirely separate from government. So when you use Federal Reserve notes, you just turn yourself into international law and you have no rights, you're a piece of property. Governments lose their immunity and descend to the level of private corporations when involved in corp commercial activity, enforcing negotiable instruments as in fines, penalties, assessment, bails, taxes. The remedy lies at the hand of the state and its municipalities seeking remedy. Copies of these documents can be found on my website linked under my, most, my recent videos for a complete set of YouTube videos with private information shares, a DVD with over 50 searchable law dictionaries and other books and forms. Contact me privately at engineerwin yahoo.com. Donations to support this work are appreciated. I prefer gold or silver coin. This is my disclaimer right here, folks. But as an extremely less desirable alternative, I can accept the fake money, the military script, the IOUs, the Federal Reserve notes, the PayPal gifts, the checks, the money orders. Send me an email for particulars. This is my disclaimer right here. As used in this act, the term United States means government of the United States. The term currency of the United States means currency, which is legal tender in the United States and includes United States notes and Federal Reserve notes. And that's taken from the Gold Reserve Act of 1934, 48 Stat 337, 
And so uh, Federal Reserve notes are meant for internal use of the government only. So they, they sit there and lay awake at night dreaming this stuff up. So technically this is only supposed to be used by the internal use of the government. But there sure is a lot of them out there. And uh, who's using those things? When injustice becomes law, resistance becomes duty. Thomas Jefferson. The forest loans of 1862 and 1863 and the formal legal tender notes were vital forces in the struggle for national supremacy. National supremacy. Legal tender notes. They formed a part of the public debt of the United States. Juilliard versus Greenman, U.S. Supreme Court. Forced loans. National supremacy. This national government became supreme. Federal Reserve notes are commercial paper. Federal Reserve notes are forced loan. Federal Reserve notes are IOUs. All commercial paper falls under two categories. Promissory notes or IOUs. A requirement for a promissory note is a promise to pay. Gold certificates, silver certificates were promissory notes. They're still commercial paper. You can never pay a debt with a Federal Reserve note. It's impossible to pay a debt with a Federal Reserve note. All the best you can do is discharge the debt with limited liability. Check out my other videos. Uh, Bankster Thieves Playlist, Roman Cult Playlist, Bankrupt Corporate So-Called Governments, Bar Members 1 through 7, do it yourself on it to volunteer for the selective service in the draft. Martial law is here. Do it yourself no income tax. Do it yourself free mail. Do it yourself kangaroo courts. Canada border pigs playlist. Bar members and their satanic connections playlist. Article 37 of the Libra Code. General Orders 100. This rule does not interfere with the right of the victorious invader to tax the people or their property to levy forced loans. That's where it's coming from. This is all part of international law. This is the military dictatorship. Federal Reserve notes are military script. It talks about it in that book, uh, Non-Ratification of the 14th Amendment by Judge A.H. Ellett of the Utah Supreme Court. In despotic governments, the government is usurped in a similar manner both upon the state and the people. Hence, all arbitrary doctrines and pretensions concerning the supreme, absolute, and uncontrollable power of government, and each man is degraded from the prime rank which he ought to hold in human affairs, and the latter the state, as well as the man, is degraded of both degradations. Striking instances occur in history, in politics, and in common life. And that's Chisholm versus Georgia, 1794. Banknotes constitute a large and convenient part of the currency of our country, and by common consent serve a great extent to all the purposes of coin. In themselves, they are not money, for they're not legal tender. Well, they made them legal tender. And yet they are a good tender, because specifically, uh, unless specifically objected to as being notes merely and not money. You can object to them. They subserve the purposes of money in the ordinary business of life by, by the mutual consent expressed or implied of the parties to a contract, and not by the binding force of any common usage for the party to whom they may be tendered, has an undoubted right to refuse accepting them. Cryptocurrency is not a forced loan. Anything can be used as a medium of exchange as long as we agree to it. It's called barter. My blog is sovereigntyinternational.wordpress.com. My website is sovereigntyinternational.fyi. My email address is engineerwin at yahoo.com. My YouTube profile is Sovereign Living. My Facebook community page is deleted due to censorship on the part of Facebook. My uh, Facebook private group, uh, Sovereignty International, is being deleted. I haven't been to Facebook for months. I have no interest in going there. Um, there's people that are there um, that are uh, managing it. My Yahoo private group is called Administering Your Public Servants. My Google private group is called Administering Your Public Servants. Follow me on Twitter at Engineer Win. Follow me on Steemit at Sovereignty International. I got a library profile. I'm moving everything to the library, quite frankly. I wanna, I'm want i going to eventually dump my YouTube channel. Uh, I would suggest that uh, you uh, go to this uh, Sovereignty International invite link and, and follow me on, on library because I'm dumping. I'm, I'm tired of Google and YouTube and their censorship. I'm tired of it all. Uh, my Patreon is Sovereignty International, and I've also got a MeWe group. Congress created, or they converted the two classes of citizens into the opposite of what uh, the Founding Fathers intended for the purpose of enslaving everybody. 
The term resident and citizen of the United States is distinguished from a citizen of one of the several states and that the former is a special class of citizen created by Congress. Citizenship is a political status and may be defined in privilege limited by Congress. Every taxpayer is assessed to K trust having sufficient interest in preventing the abuse of the trust to be recognized in the field of this court's prerogative jurisdiction. That's a summary from Henry Boland's Sad will be the day when the American people forget their traditions and their history and no longer remember that the country they love, the institutions they cherish, and the freedom they hope to preserve were born from the throes of armed resistance to tyranny and nursed in the rugged arms of fearless men. Roger Sherman, signer of the Declaration of Independence. Slayer's protestations to the effect that he derives no benefit from the United States government had no bearing on his legal obligations to pay income tax unless the defendant can establish he's not a citizen of the United States. The IRS possesses authority to attempt to determine his federal tax liability. We therefore decline to overrule the opinion of Chief Justice Marshall. We hold that the District of Columbia is not a state within Article 3 of the Constitution. In other words, cases between citizens of the district and those of the states were not included in a catalog of controversies over which the Congress could give jurisdiction to the federal courts by virtue of Article 3. In other words, Congress has exclusive legislative jurisdiction over citizens of Washington District of Columbia and through their plenary power nationally covers those citizens even when in one of the several states as though the district expands for the purpose of regulating its citizens wherever they go throughout the states of the Union. And that's National Mutual Insurance Company of the District of Columbia versus Tidewater Transfer Company, U.S. Supreme Court, 1948. Enact a code of law for the District of Columbia, now called United States, the legal estate to be in the Sestic A use. That's a 31 stat, 1432. So, so that's United States code that's going to be in the United States code somewhere, maybe. This is in the D.C. code, but really that's United States code. They call it United States code now, and the reason is, is they're trying to be deceptive. They don't want you to know that it only applies in the District of Columbia. An act of code of law for the District of Columbia, located at 31 Stat 1189, be it further enacted that interpretation and construction said code, the following rules shall be observed, namely the word person shall be held to apply to partnerships and corporations. And this is more DC code, absence of seven years at uh, 31 Stat 1230, presumption of death. They presume you're dead. So then that goes to the corporations and the, par and the partnerships. Yet still, and this is the Roman cult is where this is all coming from. Yet still it was found difficult to set bounds to ecclesiastical ingenuity. That's the Roman cult, folks. For when they were driven out of all their former holes, they devised a new method of conveyance by which the lands were granted, not to themselves directly, but to nominal fee fees, to the use of the religious houses, thus distinguishing between the possession and the use, and receiving the actual profits while a season of the land remained in the nominal fee fee was held by the courts of equity, then under the direction of the clergy, that's the Roman cult, folks. So the Roman cult runs the courts. Is that any surprise? Why do you think they wear that military uniform, that black robe? To be bound in conscience to account to assess to get use for the rents and emoluments of the estate. That's taxes, folks. And it is to these inventions that our practitioners are indebted for the introduction of uses and trusts the foundation of modern conveyancing. And this is taken from Tomlin's Law Dictionary, 1835 edition, volume two, under the definition of Mort Main. And this is codified at 15 U.S.C. section 44 definitions. Corporation shall be deemed to include any company, trust, so-called Massachusetts Trust or Association Incorporated or Unincorporated, which is organized to carry on business for its own profit or that of its members, and has shares of capital or capital stock or certificates of interest and then it goes through the any same definition without shares of capital stock or certificates of interest and the second definition is the trust the Sestake trust McCullough versus Maryland a subject is a slave taxation is forced work for nothing all subjects over which the sovereign power of the state extends are objects of taxation but those over which it does not extend are exempt from taxation. This proposition may be pronounced as self-evident. It's obvious. The sovereignty of the state extends to everything which exists by its authority or its permission. It's a contract. 
And this is found in Article 4 of the Constitution, Section 2. The Congress shall have power to dispose of and make all needful rules and regulations respecting the other property belong to the United States. That regulations are for government property. If you are regulation, subject to regulations, you are property of the government. That's what a slave is, is property. They screen out intelligent people on the hiring process for their law enforcement officers. Jordan versus City of New London, uh, U.S. Court of Appeals for the Second Circuit, case number 99-9188. Robert Jordan had a master's degree and scored too high in their test. He was too intelligent. They don't want anybody with any brains doing that. They want order followers. This is an ABC News uh, uh, Internet article. A man who's bid to become a police officer was rejected after he scored too high in an intelligence test, has lost an appeal in his federal lawsuit against the city. That's because they want them to be able to claim good faith. They want them to go out and assault you and claim good faith. Oh, gee, I'm so sorry. No evidence obtained by an officer or other person in violation of any privilege, uh, provisions of the constitutional laws of the state of Texas or the constitutional laws of the United States of America shall be admitted in evidence against the accused on the trial of any criminal case. It is an exception to the provisions of subsection A of this article that the evidence was obtained by a law enforcement officer acting in object of good faith reliance upon a warrant issued by a neutral magistrate based on probable cause. So they just want to be able to claim good faith. So then they can claim good faith. They can go ahead and assault you and get away with it and sell you into slavery. That's exactly what goes on. It goes on every day. Why do you think? that there's a bigger population in America, a percentage of people in America in prisons than any other country on the planet. It's because of this shit. And this shit. 18 U.S.C. 2707, civil action. A, def a good faith reliance on a court warrant or order, a grand jury subpoena, a legislative authorization, or a statutory authorization and including a request from a governmental entity under Section 2703F of this title, a request of an investigator or law enforcement officer under Section 2518.7 of this title, or a good faith determination that Section 2511.3 of this title permitted the conduct complained of, is a complete defense to any civil or criminal action brought under this chapter or any other law. Why do you think it's taken so long for Barr to build a case against that bitch Clinton and, and these criminals Comey and all those guys. It's because of this crap. Banks are international law. Law of nations is international law. Military despotism is international law. Uniform commercial code is international law. All codes, rules, and regulations are international law. Forced loans is probably the single most important thing for a military despotism. It makes it so the courts presume that you do not pay a debt. It makes everybody into paupers, and paupers have no rights except what they decide you can have. Gold is the money of kings. Silver is the money of gentlemen. Barter is the money of peasants. Debt is the money of slaves. The Federal Reserve, Congress created the Federal Reserve in the middle of the night. The Federal Reserve was set up under the insurance laws of the United States. Federal Reserve notes are worthless insurance script. Anything purchased with worthless insurance script is the property of the issuer of the script. Taxes are the fee for using the private money system. And it all falls under international law. The single most important requirement for a Republican form of government is lawful money. Lawful money is not Federal Reserve notes. Lawful money is not bank notes. Lawful money is not forced loans. It's not discharged debt. And it's not international law. Resistance to tyrants is obedience to God. Therefore, non-resistance to tyrants is obedience to Satan. So which one are you? Don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter at Engineer Win. Don't forget to follow me on Steemit at Sovereignty International. Don't forget to follow me on Library. Don't forget to like this video on YouTube. Don't forget to click the bell next to the subscribe button so you're notified when there's a new upload. On Steemit, don't forget to vote and make your comments. Here's the front page of the channel. The uh, subscribe button's already clicked or it'll be red. The bell is not clicked. It doesn't look like it's vibrating. You click the bell and a menu will come up and you have to select wh which uh, notifications you want. 
what is called proclaiming martial law is no law at all, but for but merely for the sake of public safety in circumstances of great emergency, okay? Emergency, there's the operative word right there. Setting aside all law and acting under military power. And that's 8 Attorney General's Opinion, February 3rd, 1857. That's why they have to pass statutes for common law offense. That's why all statutes are edicts under martial law. We can't even begin to count the number of times judges, lawyers, and statesmen have said there isn't any common law anymore. It's been replaced by statutes. They'd be more truthful if they said there isn't any common law anymore. It's been replaced by martial law. That's taken from the non-ratification of the 14th Amendment by Judge H. Ella to the Utah Supreme Court related to the case of Diet versus Turner. There are no common law offenses against the United States, only those acts which Congress has forbidden with penalties for disobedience of its command or crimes. Remember in the um, causes and necessities for taking up arms, it said that um, statutes have pa been passed extending the courts of admiralty and vice admiralty far beyond their ancient limits, superseding and replacing common law of martial law. Under Texas law, no act or omission is a crime unless made so by statute. The legislature may create an offense and the same enactment provide exceptions to its application. But in fact, and in law, such statutes are intended to be applied to those who are here as residents in the state under Interstate Commerce Clause of the Federal Constitution and the so-called 14th Amendment. U.S. Supreme Court, United States versus United Mine Workers, 1947. Under a military dictatorship, there is no law, which is why they're required to pass statutes, which are edicts for common law crimes like murder and assault. This creates civil law, which creates a democracy. Under military dictatorship, you have a democracy. Democracy is international law. Render, therefore, unto Caesar the things that are Caesar, and unto God the things that are God. I have exclusive content available on my website and on Patreon. Website has two subscription levels, and I accept cryptocurrencies. My basic subscription level is $29.99 a year for the videos only. My uh, um, platinum or uh, yeah, platinum subscription level is $49.99 a year for the videos plus unlimited consultations. But the unlimited consultations have a limit <laughs> because I'm not a liar. Well, I'm in an attorney. No, I'm in a liar. But I can tell you what I would do under certain circumstances and where to find the forms. Um, but that doesn't include like 40 emails in a day, okay? And voice communication is extra, okay? So it's by email. The only power that these New World Order Satanists have over us is through fraud and deception, and my agenda is to expose it for all our benefit. But I cannot fight all the battles, uh, and I need people being on point. So uh, if you want to make it uh, buy a subscription as a donation, it's a modest donation, there's no doubt about it. But a whole bunch of people chipping in a little bit adds up fast and and every little bit helps it's all appreciated some of my exclusive content is uh, arlington private information share which is seven videos by itself land deed trainings estoppel certificates training foreclosure estoppel certificates training corporate denial training toll roads notice and demand training invoice training notice avoid judgment training revocation of signature training third party witness training federal habeas corpus training Revocation of voter registration training, criminal complaint training, lawsuit training, other training requests, Northeast private information share videos. All forms, files, and other instructions are for free on my uh, linked on my videos and on my website. All exclusive contents on my website, and you can buy a subscription there. And the Patreon uh, website is Sovereignty International. They've been telling people for years. For decades that we're in a democracy, do you think that's an accident? I'm sick of YouTube and Google censorship. Over the next few months, I'm moving away from YouTube and Google. I've already dumped Chrome for Brave. I'm moving my videos over to Library, and uh, that's a link to uh, uh, invite to the Library a subscription um, so that you can uh, start following me there if you want to... Um, um, keep in touch and uh, I'll, I'll, I'll start I'm gonna be uploading them there I've, I've, I've uh, their library actually has a function where you can um, move all your videos up to a thousand actually and I have less than a thousand you can move up to a thousand videos from directly from YouTube they'll copy them over so and it hasn't been done yet so we'll see uh, my book is available um, Trump a true American patriot or not uh, this is the front and back cover and this is the back. This part wasn't written by me. Um, 
Does I'll just read this one part right down here. This kind of sums it up. Does Donald Trump want to transfer the power back to we the people? And Trump, you will see the great battle that is upon us. I just published my book. It's available on Amazon and on my website. Uh, Amazon does not provide autograph books. I do provide autograph books on my website. My website goes to PayPal. If you want to pay by another method, contact me privately. I can do um, um, Cash App. Uh, or if you want to send me silver or something like that, I'm certainly uh, I like that. My email address is engineerwin at Yahoo. And my website is sovereigntyinternational.fyi right here. And so um, uh, that's where you can get the book. Whereas taxation by Parliament of Great Britain for the purpose of raising revenue in His Majesty's colonies, provinces, and plantations in North America has been found by experience to occasion great uneasiness and disorders. Well, no shit, Batman. And, and so the point being is, is that the War of Independence was caused by taxation. They were trying to get money, okay? And so... So they, that's why they impose the, impose the military dictatorship, and, and that's what's going on today. That from and after the passing of this act, the Car King and Parliament of Great Britain will not impose any duty, tax, assessment, whatever, payable on any of the colonies, provinces, or plantations in North America or the West Indies, except only such duties that may be expedient to impose for the regulation of commerce. And that's uh, 1778, George III, Chapter 12. 1778. So that's an imperial act that was passed by, by Parliament two years after the Declaration of Independence. <clears throat> so the, the War of Independence was over taxation, and, and, and uh, it's just about always that's the issue. It's always over taxation. And, uh, and they, they're, they're trying to get money, and so they impose a military dictatorship, and the people stand up to them and say, screw you. They get unplugged. We're going to see what unplugged is here by the end of this video. Taxes cause the War of Independence. If they can tax you, then you are their slave. If they can take a penny, they can take it all. You are forced to work for them for nothing. It's becoming more and more difficult to be free. A tax is an impost. An impost. Impost. <laughs> a tribute imposed on the subject. If you are subject to taxation, then you are a subject. A subject is a slave. You're subject to regulation. You are property, folks. An excise, a tallage in public law, taxation signifies a system for raising money for public purposes by compelling the payment of individuals of sums of money called taxes. It's a contract. Some general principles of taxation have been said to be the subjects of every state ought to contribute to the support of the government as nearly as possible in proportion to their respective abilities, that is, in proportion to the revenue which they respectively enjoy under the protection of the state. Well, revenue, that's corporate profits, folks. In the observation or neglect of this maxim consists what is called inequality or uh, equality or inequality of taxation. And that's the Dictionary of English Law, Sweet and Maxwell Limited, London, 1959. There's two ways to conquer and enslave a nation. One is by sword and the other is by debt. When acting to enforce a statute and subsequent amendments to the present date, the judge of municipal court is acting as an administrative officer. Remember, all statutes are edicts under martial law. And not in a judicial capacity. Courts administering or enforcing statutes do not act judicially, but merely ministerially, but merely act as an extension as an agent for the involved agency, but only in a ministerial and not a discretionary capacity. They're bought and paid for clerks. It's a military dictatorship. This is these bar member pigs. It is the accepted rule, not only state courts, but of the federal courts as well, that when a judge is enforcing administrative law, they are described as mere extensions of the administrative agency for superior reviewing purposes as a bought and paid for clerk. Judges have become involved in enforcement of mere civil stat mere statutes, civil or criminal in nature, or otherwise act as mere clerks of the involved agency. They're bought and paid for. Ministerial officers are incompetent to receive grants of judicial power from the legislature. Their acts in attempting to exercise such powers are necessarily nullities. They're not judges. They're in bad behavior. It's a military dictatorship. It's a military commissioner, okay? 
and uh, Texas Constitution, Article 2, Section Section 1, says that uh, there's three branches of government and one official from one branch of government cannot work for another one. So in Texas, that's perjury of oath. When there is no jurisdiction, there's no judge. The proceeding is as nothing such has been the law from the days of Marshall Saya. And that's a federal court case, Manning versus Ketchum, citing Bradley versus Fisher, which is a U.S. Supreme Court case. And that one is citing 10 Coke 68, which is Lord Coke in the 1500s. A judge wears a military uniform. The judge sits there and plays stupid. If you fail to follow some obscure rule or procedure, they sell you into slavery. It's all a kangaroo court. Everything they do is a fraud and a nullity. Oh, look at that! Judge works for the state. Prosecutor works for the state. Police or witness works for the state. The vast majority of the disputes that the police initiate on behalf of their employer are also adjudicated by their employer, where the plaintiff, the judge, the antagonist, the police, and the only witness, also the police, all represent the same party. And since no corpus delecti, mens rea, or ex reis can be produced, doesn't technically qualify to be heard according to its own laws. The state, therefore, is indistinguishable from a criminal cartel. It's a show trial. It's a kangaroo court. It's exactly what it is. But in fact, and in law, such statutes are intended to be applied to those here as residents in the state under the Interstate Commerce Clause of the Federal Constitution and the so-called 14th Amendment. And that's United States versus United Mine Workers, 1947, U.S. Supreme Court. The current 13th Amendment authorized the slavery. It's slavery is what it is. They sell you into slavery. Section 1 of the 13th Amendment, neither slavery nor involuntary servitude except as punishment for crime where the party shall have been duly convicted. That authorized it right there. He, the prisoner, as a consequence of his crime, not only forfeited his liberty, but all his personal rights except those which the law and his humanity affords him. He is for the time being a slave of the state. 1871. It's all about slavery. If a man be found stealing any of his brethren, the children of Israel, and maketh merchandise of him, or selleth him, then that thief shall die, and thou shalt put evil away from among you. That's if you consider yourself a Christian. Now, there is certainly, uh, Mark Passio says that 90% of Americans are practicing Satanists. So I would understand if maybe you think you're a Satanist. But if you consider yourself a Christian, we Christians have to put this evil away from among us. Okay, these people need to be put to death is what needs to happen. All these people that are in prisons have been sold into slavery. We have a bigger percentage of people in prisons than any other country on the planet. We are now reaping the judgments of an indignant God with these pestilences that are running all over this country and are going to get worse. There's more of them. There's more coming, and, uh, and it's going to keep coming until we decide to put this evil away from among us. The, this Constitution and the laws of the United States shall be made in pursuant thereof, shall be the supreme law of the land. The judges in every state shall be bound thereby. Anything in the constitutional laws of any state to the contrary notwithstanding. And that's Article 4, Clause 2 of the uh, uh, Federal Constitution. This is all coming from Congress and the Roman cult. Because Congress is owned and operated by the Roman cult. My history of the Jesuits is not eloquently written, but it is supported by unquestionable authorities and is very particular and very horrible. There, the Jesuits' order or restoration in 1814 by Pope Pius VII is indeed a step towards darkness, cruelty, and despotism and death. I do not like the appearance of the Jesuits. There is a body of men who merited eternal damnation on earth and in hell. It is the Society of Loyola. John Adams, second president of the United States. Within 20 years, this country is going to rule the world. Kings and emperors will soon pass away, and the democracy of the United States will take their place. When the United States rules the world, the Catholic Church will rule the world. That's Roman Catholic Archbishop James E. Quigley, uh, Chicago Daily Tribune, May 5, 1903. And there's the Roman conquest there, folks. Evidence of it all over the place. When the pimp came and spoke to Congress, well, the Pope. No, he's a pimp. Anyways, this text, this red text, is really hard to read, so I have it down here. Uh, so we'll start with this text right here, and that says, Roman Achaea, military staff carried in battle by all Roman commands, planted on all conquered nations. That was this one here, pointing at this right here. 
And this next text right here is pointing at Biden, okay, who is now running for president. Devout Roman Catholic, honorary degree from Jesuit Scranton University. That's this text right here, and that's pointing at Biden. And then this text right here, Roman bundle of rods bound to a weapon symbolizing subservient under the rule of a single man. That's this text right here pointing at these. Fascists. Actually, I, I, I didn't put that fascia in there. I should have. And then the last one is Roman Catholic, devout Roman Catholic, trained by Jesuits, installed first Jesuit cap, chaplain to the house. And that's this right here pointing at Boner or Beaner or whatever he was called. Uh, when he was Speaker of the House. And then that's the pimp right there. And what I did is I went and got a better picture here so that you can see all that without all of those people there. And uh, obviously there's only one chair there. So they went and when Biden was there and there was a joint out joint session, they went and brought another chair. But um, so there is the... Um, Roman Achaea military staff carried in battle by all Roman can, uh, commands planted on all conquered nations. Right there. And these are the fascists right here. So that's the uh, speaker's podium. Congress is owned and operated by the Roman cult. On behalf of the Roman cult, Congress has been imposing a military dictatorship on everybody in America. Congress has sold themselves to the Roman cult. Congress has breached the trust. Congress is engaged in treason. Congress is owned and operated by the Roman cult on behalf of the Roman cult. Congress has been imposing a military dictatorship on everybody in America. Technically, their military dictatorship is only on corporations, but the Roman cult has used their SESTK trust scam to impose it on everybody. And I go into it in greater depths in my book. Congress has given war powers to the president, which is why there's always another war and another emergency. Georgetown University is a Jesuit university. We can have a benevolent dictator, a tyrant dictator. Obama was a textbook tyrant, and, uh, and Trump is trying to put a stop to it all, and he's dealing with the tyranny that Obama put into place. Pelosi gets up and tells the House, we can't read this bill until after we approve it. Okay, so obviously that's, that's, she's perjuring her oath of office by doing that, but that's something that uh, the owners want done, okay, the Roman cult. Trump is in the viper's pit. Lindsey Williams is a Christian minister who uh, was uh, in the Alaska oil pipeline in the 60s. And um, he got to know um, the, the, the movers and shakers up there. And they turned out to be elites. And uh, he got invited to their board meetings and got a lot of special treatment from them. And uh, because of that, um, he stayed in contact with them for all, uh, for all the years since. And they tell him what they're what's planning on what they're doing and they want him to publicize the information so they tell him what he can publicize and what he can't and so anyways he publicizes what he can and one of the things he said is that when Trump got elected God intervened that's the elite said that that God intervened and their plans were on hold now their plans obviously aren't completely on hold they want to tank the economy but they haven't done that yet they've been just making it go up and up anyways uh, as long as Trump is in power, their their plans are largely on hold, uh, and Trump is in the in the viper's pit. God intervened when Trump was elected. We the people are the rightful masters of both Congress and the courts, not to overthrow the Constitution, but to overthrow the men who would pervert the Constitution, and that's uh, Lincoln. And there's the pimp. In the top picture, the pimp is meeting with Obama, and they're laughing and chuckling. Obama was a textbook tyrant, so the pimp knew that, that he had him in his hip pocket, and he was going to do whatever he wanted him to do. And, uh, and Trump, Trump, is he's not too happy about Trump. You can see that. And that's because Trump is going to put a stop to it. Everything's on hold. And so the pimp isn't too happy about that. When the debate is lost, slander becomes the tool of the losers. And um, I'm going to put at the end of this video a little uh, um, um, clip of Pelosi talking about the slander that they're planning on doing. And um, rebellion to tyrants is obedience to God. When the debate is lost, slander becomes the tool of the losers. Socrates. 
So we got lots of tyrants that we need to rebel against, governor tyrants, congress tyrants, county commissioner tyrants, city tyrants, county sheriff tyrants. Now county sheriffs are supposed to be the ones that are protecting we the people, and but we got to educate them. And so some of them are tyrants and some of them are standing up for us. And so uh, you need to find out about your local county sheriff and, and if he's, if he's uh, not a tyrant, then tell him you're at his back. And if he is a tyrant, you need to tell him rattle his cage. And then there's these judicial whores. They're all tyrants. So uh, America needs God. And so, uh, in my opinion, rebellion to tyrants is obedience to God. We need to um, repent and become unplugged. This is unplugged. <laughs> Yeah, this is a great one from the movie The Matrix. And he gives them the finger. <laughs> we need to become unplugged, folks. We need to become unplugged. This is a med medical dictatorship. We need to put it back where it belongs. These people are tyrants. And we need to rebel against them. We, this is a medical dictatorship. And we need to put a stop to it. Uh, because they're, what they're planning is not going to be pleasant. If we don't put a stop to it. We need to put a stop to it now. Anyways, um... That's the end. I'm going to put that uh, video with Pelosi up after this. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. You demonize and then you, it, we call it the wrap-up smear. If you want to talk politics, you call it the wrap-up smear. You smear somebody with falsehoods and all the rest. And then you merchandise it. And then you write it. And they'll say, see, it's reported in the press that this, 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 and this. So they have that validation that the press reported the smear, and then it's called the wrap-up smear. Now I'm going to merchandise the press's report on the smear that we made. And it's, it's a tactic.